I wanted to do something a little bit different because an intercomites meeting as we've just had is also, it's a bit of a report card moment on where we stand in the relationship between Italy, between in particular Australia and Italy. I just want to say this up front. I think historically Italy has been generous to its citizens abroad, but there's a trend emerging of which we spoke about this morning uh, significantly, and this trend is a continual erosion of funding towards what I call established and very hard-fought rights and obligations on the part of the Italian state and to its citizens abroad. Ironically, we, we're here today only a few metres from where we had the Italian Chamber of Commerce, which we don't have anymore. And I'm told from people who I respect their opinion very much that, in fact, we are losing opportunities from the fact that we don't have this Chamber of Commerce here anymore. And uh, we're also seeing cuts, uh, funding cuts to, uh, to, the uh, to Italian language teaching, to comites, and it's only a few years ago that we nearly lost our consulate here in Adelaide. My point is, and something that will be underlined in the discussions today, that this negative approach, um, which doesn't seem to be taking into consideration the many achievements that have happened, or doesn't value the considerations of the achievements that have been here in Australia for many years, I think they're going to have a negative impact. It's particularly now. These institutions that I've just mentioned before, they must not be dismantled, but better understood for the great value that they can bring to the Italian state and as to Australia. Especially now, and you may say, why now and why? There's something occurring now which I'm, I'm seeing different. From an Australian perspective, as Australia moves away from its reliance on the mining boom, it's looking to, to develop new business sectors focused primarily on innovation, science, technology, or as Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull says, an innovation economy. In other words, Australia may well have the economic capacity, but it needs to invest and to develop its intellectual skills capacity as it moves forward to achieve this goal. One way in which Australia is confronting this situation is in bringing to Australia the brain power and skills that it lacks. And that is businesses are searching and bringing to Australia very high skilled personnel in what we would call high, high, highly skilled immigrants. On the other hand, a recent EU report, while praising the intellectual capacity of Italy's research and innovation sector, nevertheless stated that Italy's research and innovation policy were underfunded and needed to be better coordinated. Now, underfunded may mean many things, but in particular the crisis that they've had in Europe for a number of years, I believe, has created a bit of a paralysis, especially in the innovation sector. This paralysis has meant that we are seeing la fuga dei cervelloni, or what a lot of people see is the brain drain from Italy. However, one could argue that while Italy is losing these people, Australia, um, well, it's our, it's our gain. But of course, what I'm seeing with the recent form of, of this highly skilled migration is that it brings benefits to both countries, to the, to the country which that person leaves as well. Now, we all know that migration has become a little bit of a touchy word. Politicians don't like to talk about migration. It's, it, brings in connotations of refugees and boats, boat people, backpackers being abused and all these sorts of things, which are very relative points in their own specific way. But immigration is essentially the basis, our GDP, our GDP which uh, our politicians love to boast about around the world, is on the basis of our immigration. Australia's economy, and I just need to state this, grew 2.4% in 2016. It's growing faster than every G7 economy. And this correlates with the fact that the Australian population was growing faster than 33 other OECD countries. Simply put, Australia's population's growth has averaged more than 1.6% a year for more than a decade. And that's about 350 to 450,000 people a year. And about half of this is immigration. So you don't have to be smart to figure out 
that it's in fact the immigration factor that is essentially at the moment the engine of this economy. The point is that a major strength of Australia's economy, as I've said, has always been immigration. And what I'm saying now is nothing, uh, is nothing uh, new. As I said before, a unique aspect of these highly skilled immigrants that are coming in today is that, as I said before, in many ways they bring benefits to both the country they, they leave and to the country that they come in. And just in this room today, for example, we have Luca Oro, who's the national manager for Nicella Foods. This is a typical example. Somebody who comes here with 20 years experience, 20 years experience under his belt. There's no wonder that he comes here and he's snapped up by a major company who wants to expand its product range, particularly European product range. These people also bring a network. You know, how do you put that in a job advertisement? They bring a network of years of experience and contacts. Similarly, someone like Antonio Rosado, that's why I asked you to sit down before Antonio. Someone like Antonio who has training as a, as a lawyer, has, has a commerce degree, has experience in chambers of commerce throughout Europe. There's no doubt that uh, where you work at Bottega Rotolo, your, your important role as a business development manager is so important. These are the examples of the skills, as is uh, Alessandro Ragazzo, a very highly experienced sommelier, and we have Enzo Verdino and Lauro Siliquini from Ruby Red, who are taking food and restaurants to another level. Which brings me to the first speaker, Dr. Sergio Ferro, because Dr. Sergio Ferro encompasses all the things I've been talking about up to now. If some of you might remember in the 80s and 90s, you wouldn't remember this, Christian, you're too young, but uh, there was a guy called Victor Kayam, you know, the Remington shaver, who said, I like the shaver so much, I bought the company. Well, this is the example here. You have a local Italo-Australian young entrepreneur who's got the money. You've got, on the Italian side, you've got someone who's got the intellectual capacity but maybe doesn't have the funding. Together, they come together, they come together, and of course, something amazing happens. Not only is the company in Australia growing, but the company in Italy is growing as well. And this is the sort of example that uh, is, is relevant and needs to be understood on the part of the Italian government as well. Whether it be in the form of a Chamber of Commerce or something in that nature, there is economics and there's money to be made and Australia, as a, as a wealthy country, very close to Asia, needs to be considered. I, I just remember something uh, Dr. Gentile, representing the ambassador, said uh, uh, just before. Italy is starting, this is after the, uh, the, uh, the uh, frigate that came here, that the Italian authorities were so impressed that they're starting to understand that there is something quite special in this part of the world. They also bring an element of, of language through, and this is something that is also undervalued. It's very easy for us to say, well, the whole world is learning English. I mean, that's, that's an arrogant approach, as I, as I think. So it's very important, and this touches, brings me to the second speaker, Professor Angela Scarino, who will actually, amongst the many things that she will talk about, she'll also talk about the importance of language and actually be economically beneficial. So in, the, in this situation where we are losing funds to the teaching of Italian language, you know, this is, this is so disappointing at this time where people are not seeing that for the little bit of money that uh, our hard-working anti-gestori do in this Australia, in, in Australia, there are so many benefits to be, uh, to be uh, achieved. Our final two speakers our uh, Honourable Fedi, we were going to have uh, Francesco Giacobbe, but he contacted me in the early hours of the morning. He, his plane got stuck in, in Abu Dhabi. I, I must say this, I have a lot of respect for these politicians. They are essentially, and it's, you know, it's my biased view, but I'll say I think they're, they're centrist, they're not, they're not hooked up on any ideological obsession, and they also are form the part of the, the party that governs Italy, and they have the most important quality a politician should have in that they've had a career before they enter politics and I think this should be a mandatory requirement for anyone entering politics. 
So I look forward to his, in a way I would say it's, uh, he plays an important role in facilitating all the things, the points that I've made. I'm not trying to put a lot of pressure on you, uh, Marco, but you do play an important role in uh, trying to assist us in what we're trying to achieve. So thank you everybody. We, uh, I think you'll find the rest of the afternoon very interesting and before we have uh, some welcoming remarks also on behalf of our ambassador through Dottor Gentile, thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the afternoon.